what do you guys think? How how much how much of how much of as black men are our inability to uh or um unwillingness to, you know what I mean, subscribe to mental health uh and be active with our mental health, how much do you think is is residuals from slavery? It's a lot. Oh, it's it's a lot. And that's all uh, to answer they just even answers the question you asked him. It all it all stems from how we were brought up, you know, especially as 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 black men, you know, when you, if you were to do something, you hurt yourself or you can't get in cry. trouble, you can't cry. Did they tell you don't cry? You ain't supposed to cry. You a boy, you ain't supposed to cry. And they tell you that. Yeah. And so oh. you you begin to train yourself to, or you're trained, or you are you, trained. You, you're yeah, trained. Yeah, 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 you're trained to not show emotion. Yeah. And so you internalize all of that. And that even happened way back in slavery. You know, if you were feeling some type of way about any little situation, you couldn't show it because then they would know how to further break you, how to further get to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, it it, it all is intertwined. It's a generational. Oh, yeah. Um, I read um, a status Facebook, Instagram. It was a mean something. How it said how you teach your son not to cry. But then you beg your boyfriend to be more open with you. Mm. You you teach your son not to play with dolls, but you buy Michael Kors or or no, it was you you teach your son not to play with dolls, but want him to learn how to appreciate women. Yeah. Um you teach your son not to uh you don't buy your son uh cooking sets or sewing machines, but you buy Michael Kors and Tom Ford and all those things. Yeah. Um, and it, that those things are true. Like we try to make our sons tougher, yeah, or for other stigmas, and then and then we ask of the opposite in men. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, later on in life, yeah. Uh, and maybe that was probably from a, a female perspective. It was a female perspective. Yeah, yeah. I believe it was. It a makes female sense though. But but it was. I was like, hmm. That like. Again, it makes sense. So I brought this up on the last podcast, and I didn't really get a chance to go like deep into it. But if you peep out the Willie Lynch letters, um, and Willie Lynch, for those of you guys who don't know, was some scholars believe he didn't exist. Some scholars believe that he did exist. Regardless is if this person actually existed, the methods were definitely used, real, yeah. and they were definitely used. Um, essentially, uh the story goes slave owners were having issues with controlling and keeping their slaves in line. And they asked for Willie Lynch to, who was from the Caribbean, um, to come and, uh, I guess, you know, <laughs> train them <laughs> yeah, on, how to, on how to yeah, give a whole seminar <laughs> on how <laughs> to, <talk>. yeah, <laughs> how to keep their slaves, you know I mean, in line. And he wrote this letter as a response to that. And he said something in the beginning of the letter that is super potent, in my opinion. He said that uh, he said that if you do this, if you do what I'm asking you to do, the effects will last a minimum of 300 years. And I believe he wrote this in like 1712 or something like that. It was said that this was written in 1712. And we just hit, you know I mean, 2012, eight years ago. And some of the same things that he talked about are things that we are still dealing with. And one, one of those things is this. He said in the Willie Lynch letters, he said, first thing you want to do is you want to get your biggest, most, most powerful slave, that male. Whoever that man is, that's the biggest one. The one that everyone else kind of looks up to slash fears, whatever you want to get him, and essentially you want to break him. You want to break him in front of everybody. You want everybody to come around and look while this is happening, and you want to beat him within the inch of his life. You want to tar him. You want to feather him. Um, actually, I think it even goes as far as to say you, you probably got to go ahead and sacrifice. You got to kill him. And, and and actually, one of the things that it says, which is why I don't really rock with Levi's too heavy, it says in that Willie Lynch letters, tie his left limbs to one horse 
and his right limbs to another horse and beat the horses in opposite directions so that they will, you know what I'm saying, split essentially it. split it. And if you look at a pair, the back of the logo for Levi's, that's exactly what it is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but anyways, so he says, um, the reason why you want to do this is because what will happen is these people will see this person that they had so much faith and hope in and ad- yeah. ad- ad- adoration for. And what's going to happen is he said, this is exactly what he said. He said the moms, the mothers are going to rear their sons up in such a way because of the fear of what, what they just experienced. They're, they're going to rear their sons up in such a way to where they're going to tell them never to disrespect you, never to get out of line, never to, you know what I'm saying, buck up, uh, at, buck you. up at you. And they will self-perpetuate this for generations to come. And so fast forward and you look at, you know, what's what, you know, the, it's common to see these these killings, these murders happen and these videos go viral of black men getting shot and killed by the police. And you got mothers telling their sons, you see that? Hey, I don't want that happening. Keep your hands on the wheel. Yes, Get sir. Home. No, sir. Shake your head. Conform to. Bro, it's, it's still being perpetuated, bro. It is still going on. It hasn't stopped. And then seeing what we saw with them storming the Capitol and nothing happening to them, knowing good and well, had they looked like us. They've been shot down on the steps. And they were talking about them thugs, the looters. They ain't touching nothing, but they looters. Bro, it is a tough time to be a person of color. It's been tough. It's been tough, for sure. 